All right, all right, all right. Good morning. Ich bin pünktlich diesen Morgen. All right. Um, <laughs> here you go. She always knows everything. It's amazing. These mods. Yes, let's say, uh, let's say hello to um, our mod prime. We have uh, Kirihiko in the house. The one thing I did not set up is my stream deck, which allows me to do some visual kind of call outs. <clears throat> Maybe someone has that saved up, but uh, I used to be able to press a button and get some link to something kind of funny. Not really funny, but if you follow the stream, you might find it amusing. All right, it's Saturday on a long weekend. I've got this piece. I, You know what? I, uh, I said I was going to finish it on stream, and I think uh, it just kind of speaks to... If you're an artist and you love drawing, feel compelled to draw. You see something, you want to fix it, you want to draw. So I, I, I think as I've come into my office, I've seen this. I go, like, oh, I need white out here, and I will inadvertently add some detail and I realize, oh crap, I, I said I was going to finish this on stream. Obviously I'm not, so, um, well, for the most part, I just did some very minor adjustments. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Happy Saturday. All right, so what I can... Now looking at this a week later, I think the shadows on here are fine, but I would like more contrast. And how do you create more contrast? Um, well, certainly when you have more white and black, smaller white and black areas, it actually flattens out. Meaning if you like squint at this part of the image from like, you know, 10 yards, it turns gray, right? It's like a pixel pattern, black, white, black, white. So the way you create more contrast is by this, larger areas of white next to larger areas of black. So I'm going to go in and create some larger areas of white. Um, and what that does is it uh, makes this area darker, or I'm going to make this area darker. I'm going to turn it this way because this uh, white out kind of pools, and I don't want it to all pool at the bottom. So I'm basically, this is a pro tip. Level 300 tip, you basically rotate the art so it dries evenly. If you work on a flat surface, you don't have to worry about it at all. Good morning, Cynthia Yip. Cynthia Yip. Holy Arts and Crafts Batman. Jonella, I'm doing good. Good morning. Pity83, all the way from Holland. Michael Al Alfin Art, thank you. Glad you like it. Or, if you're down under, you can rotate it uh, the other way. Thank you very much for the bits, Janella. Uh, Spiky Summer has subbed Pasmeral. Pasmerai has resubbed as well. Um, Jeff UTV. Deeply Dippy. 13, thank you very much. All right, so that's kind of nice and dry. Uh, it's, uh, I was going to say apropos, but it's, no, it's more weird. I'm working on a gargoyle, <coughs> um, the week after the Notre Dame in Paris, uh, partly burnt down. I have a ton of pictures of that place, um, but I resist the urge to post them on Instagram. But, uh, yeah, holds a lot of memories one of the most beautiful edifices in the world and probably my f I th what I think is the most beautiful city in the world, which is Paris. Uh, it was tragic watching that happen. But they, re will, they will rebuild it and it'll look the same. It's weird, you know, uh, they rebuild, rebuild buildings in, in Europe and they look exactly the same as they used to stand. We rebuild things in the U.S. and we build a completely new structure. Um, 
Good morning, Mati Tattoo. So yeah, if you think uh, I have full confidence, I'll look great. Uh, you know, if you look at much of Europe, uh, especially Germany, I mean, all those buildings were destroyed during the war. War. You know, if you look at uh, pictures of the Bundestag in Berlin, uh, I mean, that Berlin was completely raised to the ground for the most part, short of, uh, I think, uh, one of the churches still had bits of structure there. There are not a lot of cities in Europe that uh, did not have their buildings destroyed. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Hans Gretel asks, what is this for? This is going to be auctioned uh, for a, uh, every year I kind of donate a piece of art for a school fundraiser, yeah, a local school fundraiser. So when this is done, I and they put the link live, I will share it on Instagram and Twitter and um, people bid on it. It's a uh, 11 by 17 original Batman illustration pen and ink on board. It's mostly done. <clears throat> I think I probably have two, I was going to say three hours, but I think I'm overcompensating because I usually underestimate. So I'm going to say two hours which I really think is an hour, but I'm saying two hours, but I think it's an hour. We'll see what happens. It's mostly done in that uh, all the all the major shapes are done. <clears throat> the anatomy's done. At this point, I'm just uh, fine-tuning everything, uh, balancing out the grays, things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy 420 for those of you. If that's your thing. Although in California, like any day is potentially 420. I mean, uh... <clears throat> what? I'm gonna get this. Uh... Let's try this out here. <clears throat> and this is potentially a little dangerous because it means I'm gonna have to come in. But you'll get a slightly oh, how about that? A little, a little bit closer in, but you can see a little more detail. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I set this up on my new PC, and I auto configured, so it's actually streaming. I think at like. Uh, 22, what is it? 2240? What is it? This thing is streaming at 20, <coughs> 2560 by 1440. That's friggin' amazing. You know, whenever I find these like old video clips uh, from my phone or video camera back in the day, and you you look at them on a, a modern day screen, they're like this big. <laughs> it's like two two pixels, kind of gently turning on and off, and you're like, "What? I can't even tell what's going on." So some of the rendering I'm doing is uh, adjusting gray values. Some of it is uh, creating, um, some of it's just kind of fixing bad rendering. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of it's giving uh, shape and form, right? So the lines create depth, they create texture. They also create form, which is the shape of things.
The source says 1080p. Hmm. Oh, I'll have to look into it later. Thanks for the alert. I ran auto configuration, so maybe it decided that uh, it didn't really want to. That the base resolution was that, and it chose to go something a little easier on the on the pipes. <clears throat> I think someone asked, like, what does that mean, rendering, um, balancing the grays? All right, so if you look at this image, and you, again, squint your eyes, <clears throat> there are areas that are all black, there are areas that are all white, and then there are areas that are like a light gray, a darker gray, almost black. So if you assign them numbers, like 9 being the darkest and 1 being the lightest, you know, there's a lot of like three sixes and nines or three sixes and sevens. Um, and depending on where you put those numbers, those values next to each other, they create three dimensional shapes. So um, it would look odd if this was all kind of rendered <clears throat> and this area is all white, which is what it started out with. So it's just about making sure the gray values are consistently applied across depending based on the lighting effects. So like this is the darkest area right here. Thank you very much, Danny Unchained, for the uh, donation. Okay. Alright, <clears throat> go a little darker here, create another, so if that's a 5, I'm going to create a value of 7 right here, <clears throat> excuse me, mm, this is uh, also a 5 in here, go against the grain and just make that a little bit darker. Now, if you're balancing the grays and you make that darker, all that's darker now compared to down here. And so I'm going to go in and kind of adjust that as well. Make sure I'm on the screen. Maybrick713 and Preacher Boy 777 have. Subbed as has Darth Lori and U Towers, old school GGs. Thank you guys for subbing. Superhero Swimmer Art. How many values are there? Over 9,000? Uh, there are infinite number of gray values. It's like the space between the space. Um. But if you're old like me, there's 256. And then uh, you younger whippersnappers, you guys think there's millions. And in the future, I'm sure they'll have screens that <coughs> display trillions. Um, but let's just say... There's black and not black only. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, you know what? I did read in chat before I went live. Uh, I think it was Pandemus who said that he missed... When he found out about the streams, he just missed one. And then he's seen every single one since then. Is there anyone in stream who has dedicated their life... <laughs> to this art stream and has been here not just like 
directing the URL here and just casually sit and watching, actively watch every single stream. I think even Kirihiko has missed one or two. Yeah, Kanger Banger. I, I hope not too. Yeah. No, Kira, you, uh, you, there was, I thought there was one where you were like traveling or something like that. Uh oh. All right. I, I will never, I, I'm not, <laughs> I will never hurt out uh, Kirihiko. Uh, for sure. Okay. She gets the Iron uh, Machin Award. What is iron in uh, German? It's an easy one. Ice? No, that's ice. Welcome in, Brohaj, too. I have not been in every stream. Some of my, uh, my kids have actually streamed. I don't count those, though. Hey, Ink One, how are you doing? KB Bradshaw using a loophole to qualify for seeing them all. Am I ready for Game of Thrones? Uh, ask Kanger Banger. Of course, of course. Although it's weird <coughs> watching it week by week because I was streaming or kind of binging it to catch up for so long. It was easy to literally watch one or two a night for months on end. Thank you very much for the bits, SM Carti. I have to know what iron is in German. Ted Scheckler, born in 1969, I assume. Uh, do you want the ink to be glossy around the cape? Do I want the ink to be glossy around the cape? It's just because um, some of the ink I put down using tissue paper and other ink I put down. So like this is the tissue paper ink up here. And you can see the brush strokes here. So it just lays it down. But I'm not too worried about that because in the end, there's going to be rain and some splatter. And uh, it's almost like auto exposure on a camera. Like once you're trying to level the white and the black, all the kind of the, the black inconsistencies kind of turn into one shade, if that makes any sense. Yeah, ice, I guess I was right. Eisen, sorry, Eisen. Eisen made shin. All right. Do I use a dip pen? No, not many, many years. But early on, when I first started inking, <clears throat> all the uh, the real inkers, they were very kind of, and I don't mean this in a negative way, they are kind of snobby about uh, inkers. They were like, uh, or about tools, like, uh, no, real inkers, they don't use markers. So it was really frowned upon for many, many years to use markers uh, to ink with. But they also didn't have these microns and nice markers back in the day. Um, but even still, everything was brushed. And then I, I think when people start using metal nibs, I'm sure all the brush people are like, oh, I can't believe these, this younger generation of artists. They have no skills. They're using, they're using a crocal pen. Everyone knows where the real people with skill are brush artists. And um, trust me, the skills that they had were amazing back then. So a lot of that... Knowledge and skill set has been lost over the generation. I freely admit that. But every generation finds the tools that uh, interest them. And I think as consumer tastes shifted more towards a cleaner, hard edge line from the softer kind of fuller line that you get from um, a brush. Excuse me, more and more of the younger artists, inkers, started using crocodile pens, dip pens. Uh, specifically, the Hunt 102 was really popular, um, and uh, that was used. Sometimes they use marker for using templates to do like circles and things like that, um, but that's all that people would deign sort of like lower themselves to. Uh, and then, God forbid, use a Sharpie, and even I draw the line at Sharpies. Um, 
because they're horrible. They, they bleed and they stink and they're not they're, they're probably not good for you health-wise. And uh, the line quality can't be really controlled very well. And on top of it, they uh, will yellow over time given exposure to the elements UV light. Um, but these markers are UV steady fast. They're archival ink. I know because it says so right here. And I believe everything I read. And uh, they're very portable. And uh, even though sometimes it takes you three or four movements, strokes to kind of get the same line you can get from like one ink, uh, like what I did just there. Off of one stroke of a Crowquill pen, people, most people, I know that ink uses these nowadays, including Scott Williams. I think he uses a brush and a marker. But that guy, he can ink with a toothbrush. I mean, he can ink with uh, his fingernails. And then, uh, obviously, the next generation of people, people like Clayton... Superhero swimmer arts, uh, Asia, you know, they're all about, not saying he is, but of that ilk, of that generation. They're all about digital, and they swear by it, and I'm like, why? But um, I get it. Just have to be different. But I know that uh, in five more years, there'll be a new, the, the next, uh, the post-millennials, they'll be like, no, 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 man. Uh, uh, markers or actually brushes this is where it's at it's going to go full circle and uh, just like the the revival of turntables and uh, LP records some of my kids actually I'm like dude I, I got rid of those years ago because they warp and they scratch and uh, they're inconvenient to carry around and store what, what's wrong with you like, no the sound is so much better the fidelity okay whatever Hey, Poop Kid. We have uh, Poop Kid. He's sort of a semi-mod in the house. I think we have just uh, Kira. The other two are not here. Uh, Chief Corb has cheer. Thanks for the Easter weekend stream. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Heek. Hi, Karenitis. Hi, Karen Nida. Hi, Karen Knight. Yes, for the bits. Appreciate it. T Rec2 has subbed. T Diggity813 has resubbed using Prime. I guess you can use Prime. I guess. I know you can use Prime. You're, if you're a Prime, Amazon Prime member, you can use it to sub to any uh, Twitch stream. I think every month, though, you have to select what it is. Uh, SD Althani as we sub using Prime as well. All right. Yeah, it's week uh, Easter weekend. I had yesterday off from work, which was great. I have an extra day just to kind of get errands done. Be responsible. So I'm going to go to a, a nine in terms of value right here. All right, darker, darker. I was very tempted to smear it uh, while the ink was slightly wet. To get it a little even darker. Um, Efix, I saw there's a new Swamp Thing show. Yeah, it's debuting May 31st on the DC Universe service. You should check it out. And there's an amazing show that's on there now, which is uh, Doom Patrol. You should check that one out as well. Very, um, I think, one of the most offbeat, 
clever and creative uh, superhero uh, adaptations media right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, I'm going to try to make this darker here. So I think uh, everything's been kind of parallel. I'm going to go in with a 30 degree crosshatch, I think. I'm accessing that file right now. Okay, this is how it's done. So if you look at it, you can see how it's kind of um, just slightly gotten darker, right? So you proceed with uh, um, caution. You can just layer it on top, right? Efix. Uh, you have to sub to, it's an app that you can download on your Android or iOS device. So I'm dropping a link. Um, I think there's a free trial period of a week or 10 days or something. But it's, um, I think, eight bucks a month, 74, 75 for annual if you buy it all at once. Um, get access to, well, right, right now there are thousands, I think like four or 5,000 books, but fairly soon there'll be 20,000. Everything like a year out will be available to read digitally, which uh, for the DC universe, which I think is uh, pretty exciting. I say exciting because, well, I, I just like technology and things that you can do with technology. So it's always cool when technology allows you to, to be able to do things like that. But also in that, I think it, Excuse me. We'll expose uh, poten potentially a lot of uh, new fans and actual existing fans to a lot of content that they might not necessarily have read before because they couldn't afford it. Um, and I, I'm a strong believer in that the more you read uh, and find stuff that you love, uh, the bigger the fan you will become and the stronger our business and art form will be with more people that read more comics in general. And I understand if you're a physical retailer, okay, that, like, uh, well, some people get concerned about that, but I, I just know. Anecdotally, oh, actually, no, we have some research, right? So um, that was done some years back, but um, most people, they buy digitally and in print, they're there's a value in both. And again, the, the bigger the fan you are, the more likely you are going to be to, to buy and consume anything superhero related, which I think is good, including physical books and comics. And our, our periodical sales have been great this year. So... It's exciting to see because that means more people are going into comic book shops and reading what's going on on a weekly basis. <clears throat> Put that down here. Grumpy's F23 has subbed 20 months. Wow. We've we been around for that long. Maple 1979, 12 months. Darth Lari, Darth Lari, Darth Lari has cheered. Oh, will I be in the South, East, or Florida this year? I do not believe so. I have um, some shows I'm doing. What am I doing? I'm doing... My next show is Fan Expo in Dallas. That's the first weekend in May. That's two weeks from now. Holy crap. Um, yeah, so I'm there Saturday and Sunday. I think the afternoon of Saturday and the... 
morning, afternoon slash, uh, of um, Sunday. And then two weeks later, I will be at um, Detroit Motor City Comic Con. All right, which will be, I think, May 17th, I want to say. May 18th, Saturday, May 18th, I'll be there. Saturday only, so hopefully some of you guys can come to that. And then the next show I have after that is a show in Seattle. Actually, pull you up. Can someone correct me on that? Give me a phonetic spelling of that. Thank you very much, Dave Brocky. Uh, longtime fan since the early X-Men days. What do you think about comics switching to digital? No traditional pen and ink. Oh, you just missed my whole discussion of how different generations of creators uh, are using different tools and how I think uh, there'll be a resurgence of the brush, um, the old analog ways with the next generation of artists after the millennials. If you could scroll back just a little bit, you'll get it all. But um, Zio Hakari, when you first started inking your work, were your hands lines shaky? Uh, no, no, I... I was very blessed to uh, be able to just ink just like this right out the door. No, of course, of course. Uh, my, my, my line work was horrible. <laughs> it was shaky. I couldn't control even a marker, much less a brush or a crocodile nib. Um, I would lay down ink. It would run. I couldn't control anything. Uh, and you shouldn't expect to. Why would you? I mean, you've never done it before, you know. Um, so, uh, and it takes months. Uh, I was at the Magic Castle last night. Magic Castle is a, it's a club. It's like a private club here in LA. Uh, Semi-open to the public. But anyway, it's, it's for magicians, right? And these guys are amazing, especially the close-up magicians. Uh, these are the guys that do card tricks like three feet right, right in front of your face. They're so good at what they do. They can just do the trick like, okay, where's the hand? <laughs> Can't even do it. Anyway, um, and it's astounding. The tricks are cool. I mean, definitely cool, right? And... But conceptually, you understand, like, like, it's sleight of hand, it's manipulation, it's diverting the attention. But what I'm actually most impressed with them is their card control, which allows them to do all the sleight of hand. But the ability to take a card and hide it in your palm or make it fly from one hand to the other uh, and other crazy things like that. Uh, one guy was, like, stacking them up and moving them. Mover. I mean, it was just crazy. Um, and that, that comes about from manipulating cards in your hand for like 10 years, 20 years sometimes. Um, so I've been drawing professionally since, uh, 1987. I think that's considered a crap load of years. Tech, that's a technical term. Um. Yeah, I mean, wait. All right, that's uh, oh, it's thirty thirty two years. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, telegenus, yes. So I would think that if you spend thirty years using this tool, pencil, marker. At some point, um, you're able to do things that that uh, other people can. So if you've just, like, imagine trying to do a card trick and trying to palm a card the first time you do it. Like, why would you expect to ever be good at it? And then think about, like, how long it would take for you to be so good at that, right? Same thing with art. There's the physical manual dexterity that is learned through repetition and practice. And then there's the know-how um, 
that is developed at a different pace through reading, doing, um, interacting with other professionals. Excuse me one second. So that's the kind of um, thinking involved. So yeah, uh, yeah, your hands will be shaky. You will not get the line that you want. Um, in fact, I remember the first time I tried to ink, not even over my own pencils, but over another image. I thought like, this is, I'll just start with inking. It's a lot easier than drawing. I'm just tracing over someone's line. And you'll find that it is really difficult because A, just having the mental tenacity or discipline to sit down and actually trace another person's entire um, work uh, is grueling. But all the decisions you have to make in terms of line weight, textures, um, how to interpret little lines, uh, it's, uh, it's a fascinating exercise and you will gain great admiration and respect for people that, that ink professionally. Um, uh, how Karen, hi, Karen, night eyes. <laughs> That's, I got it right this time. Um, yeah, painting is a whole different skill set too. So I've been painting a little bit more, and uh, it's a lot of fun, but very, very different. And I, if I have some free time, I'll try to do some of that. Someone asked uh, if I normally just stream on Sundays. Yes, that, that is the answer. But tomorrow is Easter, so we're doing some family stuff. So I thought I would stream today and get this finished. As you can see, I'm taking my sweet time with this. I could... I could be moving at a pace like this, uh, right? It's just more immediate. And when I'm working, that's kind of the speed, but I'm just taking it easy today. Chatting with you fine folk, so I can kind of just move at a more leisurely pace. And there is a cost to that, meaning the uh, speed at which you work does affect your very subtly your, your line quality. So you don't want to go too slowly because then your lines will kind of have this dead weight to them. But you don't want to go too fast because then while you might have energy, you might get a little sloppy. So you just got to find where your style is in that spectrum, whether you like that really controlled flatter line or whether you want something that is more spontaneous uh, but can sometimes be reckless and kind of break the, the structure. Bar barbed wire shark. Have you drawn anything for a tattoo for someone? I, no, I think there's enough art that I've done out there that people have kind of grabbed and used to uh, tattoo themselves. Um, I've signed people's body, limbs, things uh so they people have tattooed my name on their bodies you know and i think there was a day when this is all kind of starting out where i was like oh i don't i don't feel comfortable with this um uh, <clears throat> but it's so commonplace just tattooing in general like i don't worry about it. don't worry about it anymore it's like you guys know what you're doing
I'm taking this all darker here. So I want, I want that form, the light to be on this side and then get darker as it comes down this way. The thing with this whiteout pen is it's really nice because it gives you the ability to make corrections. Um, in a way you're sort of kind of painting with the, the ink and then the whiteout as opposed to drawing and then just inking. And then I just have to figure out what's going on right down here, but I think I'm going to go this. Go and get a different direction to create that plane. And then go across. See how that's all turning out here. Sometimes I make these, uh, Strange sounds because I find myself inadvertently holding my breath while I'm drawing. Probably not a great habit. I think it kind of speaks to the fact that I'm kind of like, don't know how this is going to turn out. Or I want, like, I'm in suspense and it's. Or maybe it's a subconscious way for me to kind of still my arm. I don't know. Kind of like the sniper that uh, squeezes the trigger in between heartbeats. I ink in between heartbeats. Hey, Brian Denham. Thanks for resubscribing for 13 months. Good to see you, man. It's been a while. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he fixed my new rap slogan. That's right. Eric Fisher Art. Have I ever spilled a big gulp on a piece of art? Uh, no, I'm not against the big gulp drinks. Although it's been a I'm more like a slushy fan, though I think at this point, I keep all my uh, liquids over here. I don't think I've ever spilled any like a drink on a drawing. <clears throat> Maybe coffee. I guess technically coffee is a drink. But usually it's ink on 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 that you, that you spill, right? So Mhm. Mm Because in the camera, because it's shiny and matte. There we go. Kind of see what I'm working with here. So there's the shadow on the object, or the lighting. So if there's a round object, it's shadowed over here. Light here, shadow here. But then this object then casts a shadow here which you can see right here. All right, so you want to capture that shadow and the cast shadow. Same thing, All right? Shadow on this ridge and the cast shadow that goes across the, the face.
Thanks for the sub, SM Carti. MMC567 has subbed using Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. Welcome in. As has Jimbic and Sty or Steve3000. Welcome in. Thank you very much, Jonella and uh, the comic source for the bits. Janella asks, are the Warner Brothers Studios and DC offices near each other? They are. Just down the street. I spent a lot of my day during the week driving from the DV DC offices over to the consumer office, uh, consumer products building to the lot, which is where film and TV are, to the ranch, which is where animation is. I mean, it's say one third of my time is spent in different buildings within the Warner Brothers family. I'm just having fun with this gargoyle. I could do this for hours or I could just say I'm done. I'll just stop. There's a cast shadow right there, just kind of deepening this thing, casting a shadow on whatever this is down here. And I'm regula regulating, relegating, sorry, these uh, other accents, reflections to a sub three value. Gradient, just pushing them back a little bit. So that all the bright highlights are up here. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Suterian. I used to live in San Diego. Sketch Kick has subbed. 12 months in a row. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Zero Kira, Kira U3 has subbed using Prime as well. Uh, hi, Karen Night Eyes. Uh, no, I usually stream on Sundays. If I stream. Not every Sunday. So next Sunday, I will not be streaming, for example. Um... But the best place to find out about the streaming schedule, you obviously can wait for the uh, alerts, the notices, but um, there's a Discord channel. It's a communications platform, primarily used by gamers to talk to one another while they game. But uh, it's a fairly robust messaging and post kind of message board type. Um, platform Kate or Kirihiko can uh, send you the link and a lot of people that are here in stream basically communicate interact with one another over there in between live streams um, set up uh, meetups for conventions uh, hire each other to do art share their love of art things that they bought etc 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 there have even been um, three marriages from the Discord channel. Just kidding about that last one. Um, superhero Swimmer, I miss gaming stream. So chill. That's one word. So crappy would be the other. <laughs> I wanted to believe. Three marriages would have been amazing. Wouldn't it have been? KB Bradshaw married her husband. 
Oh, yeah, not because of Discord. They're married anyway. Anyway, uh, what's going on? Bat Patman PH. Any chance of a Jelena Medi type sketch off? Uh, unlikely. Unlikely. I should stream an Apex match. I'm just horrible. I was okay when it first came out and no one knew what they were doing. I could get a kill here and there. And now it's just all pro gamers and streamers, dude. It's, you know, um, Poop Kid and uh, Crispy Egg Roll. Uh, they, they have to carry me. <laughs> Katie Fetcher. Uh, steak and cheese. There's no, absolutely nothing to do in Scotland. All cons are crap. You know what they always say is, uh, they don't always say it, but I've heard this, that if you want to figure out what to do in life, find something you hate and uh, tackle it and make it better. You should uh, organize a show, Steak and Cheese. If you know that all the cons are crap, you got to figure you're not the only person to, to feel that way. Get out there. Make a difference. Fix it to your liking. Calling you out, Mr. Steak and Cheese. Um, yeah. You know, you, you, you have the passion for it. Make it a reality. <laughs> Bo Bradshaw, <laughs> what happened to make you, what happened to you to, <laughs> to make you so cold? Oh, okay. Shots fired. Ooh. You know, we know uh, uh, Bo and, and KB Bradshaw, they're... Um, they're online at different parts of the house. Like he's out back sipping a beer. He's got like the lawnmower there. It's on, so it sounds like he's like mowing the grass, but he's just kicking back. And KB's inside. That's how I imagine it. But they're probably right next to each other. <laughs> anyway, uh, steak and cheese. Yeah, you should do a steak and cheese Comic Con. Uh, Jay Rasco, there you go. KB Bradshaw, we're never in the same room together. It's how we stay married. More information, please. This is fascinating. <laughs> what? I can draw anytime. I want to know really what's going on. Um, in the UK, we have so many vegans. I don't know what that means. Is that white vegans? I don't know. What is it? What is it? Explain. Is that a typo? Oh, no. It's a typo. White Castle, yum. I like it. White Castles is the best. I miss White Castles. Probably the worst best or the best worst fast food. It's literally like frozen hamburgers. I want hamburgers. Very uh, frozen. Two pieces. Uh, well, imagine World War II rations where there's like meat and a bit of meat like stuff in between like two pieces of frozen bread with uh, dehydrated onions that were reconstituted and then put in chemicals to preserve them. And it's frozen. And then you steam it and eat it. That's a White Castle slider. So good. We have vegans in the house. Sweet. Oh, yeah. I want someone to create an emote for that emoticon. <laughs> hey, poop kid. Uh, like Vada. Where have I been? Where have you been, dude? I've been here all day. KB Bradshaw. How do I? It's the weekly therapy session with KB and bro, bro, bro Bradshaw. 
Oh my god, I gotta stop. Oh, the meds are kicking in hard right now. Sorry guys. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just St. Louis roots are showing there. Yeah, White Castle's the best. And then they have their onion rings are so good. I feel like yeah, I grew up in St. Louis. Yeah, uh, Mud Frost. I'm still liking Apex. I, I'm finding it harder to be competitive in the game because it's so popular and really all the all the pro dudes are in there. Just, um, you know. And But I play like maybe once every two weeks, if I'm lucky at this point, for like an hour or two, two hours. So I'm not investing a lot of time. I just don't have a lot of time, free time lately. Hence, no streams. Hence, no leaderboard action for me. Um, but I'm kind of waiting for like maybe like a, a a good MMO, a new MMO to kind of come come out. That'd be kind of fun to get back into something like that. All right, I think I'm getting to the point where I'm almost done with the black and white portion of this competition. <clears throat> Excuse me. Program Art has subbed, resub for using prime for 10 months lick your elbow 513 is that possible uh infected rage 09 loving heroes in crisis right now an amazing cover for detective comics 1000 thank you very much infected rage 09 uh sketch kick has resubbed as well um kanjiman Yes, you have arrived. Hey, Run Elephant. Just woke up, or you had a very long shower this morning. But good to see you regardless. Uh... But Poop Kid is actually, he carries both Crispy and, and me. Poop Kid is such a good gamer, he actually will play two games on one so we'll catch him he'll be like playing apex legend on one computer and then he's like playing fortnite with uh my son jackson on the other computer um yeah that's sad he still gets more kills oh run elephants at the dmv special saturday easter hours i hear you spicoli jeff Greetings from Buffalo. Mortal Kombat 11 looks sick. Sick, I tell you. TLCs are going to be amazing. Um, do I speak Spanish? No, I don't, unfortunately. Sorry. Janela, you're gonna visit the DC, uh, the Warner Brothers lot. That's a good tour. That's a good tour. If you're into movie, TV stuff, they have a lot of interesting stuff for you to see. And they're building a new building. That's pretty cool. Soylent, uh 562 hello. The Pickle Weasel has cheered. Thank you very much, Pickle Weasel and Janela. I appreciate it, guys. All right. KB Bradshaw. Uh, so, wait. Uh, where else am I going? 
this summer. Um, so after Seattle, which is or Polyup, did someone explain how to say that word? I'm destroying it every time I say it. It's Polypup, Polyup. I'm glad someone is, Karen. Pew lay up. No, pew lay lup. 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 I would like to go swing by St. Louis. It's just finding the time. A lot of fun memories growing up in St. Louis. <laughs> KB Bradshaw. Thank you for the bits. I will consider that to be my therapy for this, for the week. You know, Bo, sometimes women, they just, they don't want the solution. They just want to be heard. So just listen, nod your head. Sometimes that's just enough. This concludes our weekly marriage therapy. P wait, pew, pew all up? Pew all up? Pew all up. Oh, pew all up. <laughs> Mark my words. All right. For me, I'm like, if we're going to talk about it, I, I, I need to figure out a solution. <laughs> if I want to vent, I'll just go on Twitter. All right. Um, one hour, two minutes. Oh, it's not High Karen Night Eyes. It's Hikari Night Eyes. Hikari Night Eyes. Hi, Karen, night eyes. <laughs> All right. Cast shadow. Cast shadow. Okay. All right. Uh, now what? Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. This could be darkened here. A ridge sketch as resub for 13 months. Thank you very much. Quick draw 13 has woken up in the middle of the night. Missed the, these streams. Been so happy to wake, be awake. <laughs> Never been so happy to wake up at four in the morning. Always inspiring to watch you draw and roast everyone in stream. Good morning, Jamie. Jamie, you get married? Are you a married man? Has that happened? <laughs> Whack it, yak. Uh, nice. Why he did I go to a comic store in San Diego in the Wildstorm days? Yeah, there was, I forgot, Comics Unlimited, maybe? Soon to be, soon to be. 
for uh, Quick Draw 13. Bilster sixteen ninety four. No, the giveaways uh, those are uh, fin uh, those are ended. No more. Uh, almost all the pieces I draw are going to be um, things like this, which is for uh, a charity, or they're going to be work related pieces, which I won't announce what they are. You'll have to guess what they're for. Although sometimes it might be very easy to figure out. Um, uh, so there'll be longer form where. Something like this where I start and finish the whole thing from beginning to end. Instead of a bunch of like smaller sketches. That's the current format. Things are always subject to change. For me, I just... I, and this is one of, the thing, one of the things I think about with these very successful streamers. I love gaming, or I used to love it even more than I do now, when I was younger, of course. But man, I don't know if I could game like every single day for like 8 to 10 hours. Um, I would gladly for fun, but man, if I had to do if I felt obligated to do it, man. I guess it would be different when I was a kid. Because I did, I did... When I was heavy into MMOs, I think I was putting in those kind of hours every day. So I think it takes a certain kind of person, i.e. a younger person, to do this on a regular basis. But meaning streaming the same thing every day. But I'll tell you, for me, um, I want to keep it creative. I want to keep it fun and interesting for myself. So... Um, I figure if I'm streaming on things that I have to do anyway, I feel like I'm not um, procrastinating from my work or dodging the things I need to do. For example, you know, before when I stream on Sunday, after I streamed, I, I wouldn't want to sit down and draw again until later that night. And, uh, you know, then I, I'd be up super late trying to get you know, my deadline work done when I could have been doing it in the morning, right? Sunday morning. Actually, I, I wouldn't have done that. I would have just not drawn Sunday morning. I would have still drawn Sunday night, but I would probably feel more rested because I had time off during the day. You hear what I'm saying? Anyway. can't discount the value of just not doing anything all right we know the full value of sleeping but there's value into just kind of not doing anything like just lying there with your eyes closed or spending time with your family to kind of recharge your and your batteries to when you have to draw all right yes okay Anika, how much time did you invest into drawing before you got your first stable job? I started um, putting samples together in June, and I got my first professional gig like in November, so what, six, 11, five months. But your mileage may vary. Some people take a lot longer. Um. Jimbic, thank you very much for the donation. Your artwork helps me escape as a kid. Help me escape as a kid. Wolverine will always be the best version ever drawn along with my favorite villain, Omega Red. Thank you very much, Jimbic. That's very kind of you to say that. I'm glad that um, the work I did brought you some measure of escape and entertainment. So thank you. Uh, superhero Swimmer Art. How long would you play MMOs? Uh, when I was younger, when I say younger, like in my thirties, <laughs> it's not sad, uh, hours, like eight, 10 hours. So a lot of times I'd be drawing like I am now, and then I'd be logged into the MMO. And, uh, sometimes if you're camping things in MMOs, right, you're farming, sorry, you're farming and camping like an object that, uh, could net you some gold on the market because other players, it was a tradable item or something you could, Go into a room with three mobs, three monsters, whatever, 
barely kill all three using maybe some potions and some other stuff. Um, like kind of root the third one so it survives a bit longer, then kill it, and then you've basically um, set their respawn clocks off a little bit. So when they respawn, the next time you get two, kill the two, then the one spawns, kill the one, but slow down on killing that second one. So the next time they respawn, they're like five minutes apart, and then later, yeah, essentially five minutes apart on a five, a 15 minute respawn. Correct. Up night, 1938, 1983. Well, Lower Guck had a bunch of rooms like that. Uh, Castle Miss Moore also had rooms like that. And uh, so you're drawing, and then every five minutes something would pop up on your screen. You turn and kill it. Then you sit down and restore your mana, heal up, draw a little bit more. And you could do that all night long. Um, and at the end, leave. So it was like working, doing the page, working online, farming items. Uh, yeah. The internet does distract me from drawing. Concept, for sure. If you want to be very successful, I would turn off the internet while you're drawing. Certainly until you got it figured out or you feel comfortable drawing. It's just it's a big distraction for sure. I think EverQuest is celebrating its uh, 20th anniversary this year. Right? Is that possible? Jesus. Jeez Louise. Pretty amazing. Fish and Boris has resubbed for 12 months. I love Queen City Amusements. I do too. Join the Queen City Amusements fan club. Domo Staten. Hey, Domo. Yeah. Gaming is, uh, it's it's a waste of time, but man, is it fun, right? That's the way you got to approach it. Unless you're so good like Shroud or some of these other gamers, I mean, they can obviously do very, very well with their skills, and it's super impressive watching them just kind of do it, have that gift. And to be born at a time where they can actually monetize it. What if I were as good as these guys back in the day? Definitely lost the steps since then, but there was really no way to make a living being the best Pong player. Right? What's up, Grand Admiral Bertis? Sterbin XXL, life is distraction. <laughs> I find that funny. Because Sterbin means to die in German. And XXL is obviously the biggest size. Big death. Or the phrase live large, die large. Sterbin XXL. EJ Morgus, what's up? I don't know, man. I'm just here chilling and drawing on my Twitch stream. What about you, homie? All right. Um, steak and cheese. How often would you draw in your teens? I drew every day. It was a compulsion. Plus, there was nothing else to do. Jay Napier, 13. What should I get signed at Motor City Comic Con? Your left or right forearm? Got all the great answers today. Hi, Karen Night Eyes. Uh, I think you're. <laughs> um, you seem to be full of uh, typos today, my Wigan. Uh, do I make. Yeah, Wax City Yak. Do I make cameos in DC movies? No. You wouldn't want to see me on screen. Thank you very much, uh, Cast Code. What do you not, not like to draw? Um, complicated things. 
Doth Lori has cheered. Always loving watching you draw. Thanks for the streams as usual. Jaime Ramirez, how long did it take me to learn anatomy? Uh, there's no such thing as really a learning anatomy per se. It's really about um, the shapes of things. All right, anatomy to me is like knowing all the different names of the uh, bones in the body, where muscles induct, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Drawing the human form is more about knowing that this part of the body has this kind of shape when it's presented at this kind of angle with this amount of tension on it, et cetera, et cetera. I don't, I, early on, I, I, I thought, well, if I memorize all the names or the uh, muscles, I would be able to improve my drawing. Then I started doing it, and I realized this has nothing to do with drawing. For me, at least, everyone's mileage may differ. I'm sure there's someone going like, I learned it this way, and I memorized everything. All right. Wax City, yeah, doesn't it, though? The Joker, uh, Joaquin Phoenix looks amazing in it. Cannot wait. All right. Jaime Ramirez, yes. All right, the retro kid has subbed using Prime. Dinshu Hedgehog, do you recommend improving artists should draw as often as they can? Why, yes, I do. Jay Napier, what's the print for Motor City Comic Con? It might be this, it might be this. In fact, it probably will be this now that I think about it. Um, Sterben XXL has subbed at tier one. Thank you very much, Sterben XXL. <laughs> Dying large. That's what I'm calling you. Dying large. Thank you very much for the sub. Ananth Udu. How did you learn to draw without reference? Uh, I did. I just didn't memorize all the names of the muscles and bones. Um, the book I would recommend is Art of Life Drawing by George Bridgman. It's... Uh, yeah, in a little bit. Okay. Can you close that door? Hey, Jackie. All right, my timer's up. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So George Richmond is the guy to check out. Uh, you can buy, I, I think, a large book online. I think I bought the original hardcover. Um, that was the book that really unlocked a lot of insight to me on how to draw the human form. Okay. All right. End of that sales pitch. All right. Here we go. I want to get this done here. Hold on one second. One second, guys. Be right back.
All right. I had to take out some five-year-olds. All right. What are we doing? Um, uh, hi, Karen Night Eyes. Uh, <laughs> I, I think you just type in Jim Lee, all lowercase, and then what's the command? Uh, what is it? It's... Mm, yeah, capital W-O-U-T, lowercase. There you go. Riv God. Uh, you want to see what this looks like? Okay, here it is, guys. You can buy it at any any uh, office supply store. Pentel makes it. It's called the Jumbo Correction Pen. This one's seen some mileage. It's a it's just like a ballpoint pen, except it's a little larger. Inside's the fluid. You apply pressure to the tip, white out comes out. Shake it up so that um, it's not all watery. And then if you just move it quick enough, you can draw with it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do some small rain splatter coming up, bouncing up off the shoulders. Off the gargoyle. See that? Look how the human brain creates a pattern. Right? That's why I like the splatter, but we do this for the purpose of creating the larger ones that are low. And we're going to supplement this with uh, it's like the human brain can't but think in patterns, right? And then we're going to supplement this with uh, Splatter. Okay. The guy who recommends, I'm not a big fan of Hogarth, but at the end of the day, it's all about what unlocks the doors of knowledge perception to you, right? So everyone like everyone likes a different character, everyone likes different musicians, everyone likes different art. So whatever book does it for you is the book that you should check out. But if you want to learn the right way, check out George Bridgman's work. Okay. All right, now we have a rating party of 113 Mcroft 07. Welcome in. Hello, everybody. Am I whispering my answers? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome in, everybody.
All right. All right, all right, all right. <coughs> Zal00 has cheered. Thank you very much. Steak and cheese. If I do weekly books again, weekly? I don't think I've ever done a weekly book, but thank you for even considering me for a weekly book. Uh, monthly book? Be very unlikely to be truthful. It's just There's just too many things going on in my life. Someday, though, uh, so I guess the answer would be you never know. But right now, given my responsibilities uh, as publisher and chief creative officer, all those come first. Then, obviously, you know, stuff with the family, I've got stuff with the family. I've got, you know, my important ranking in Apex Legends i got to be concerned about. Um, so, yeah. You'll see like little short stories for me here and there, like I did in Detective 1000. Um, and I've got another short story coming up with another pretty prominent um, writer soon, soonish couple. All right. Oh, here's another thing. So even though he hasn't shot off his, his um, grappling gun at this point, I'm thinking of having. The cord, it's like a weird thing, um, which I think, would that look weird though? If I had the cord, I was thinking of drawing the cord with white out, like down here, this kind of loopy shape. What do you guys think? <laughs> Everyone's like, no, yes, no. Uh -huh. Hmm. I have to think this through, because if I do it, and he hasn't shot the grappling gun, people will be like, huh, what does that mean? It's not like it's the golden lasso. Yeah, I should probably not. I probably shouldn't do it. It's all right, I'll just do rain. It would look cool, but I don't think it makes sense. Which doesn't always stop me. Sometimes I'll just draw something because I think it looks cool. But in this instance, once I do it, and if I don't like it, it would be tough for me to... I could fit. Oh, the knee is going to catch some rain, too. I guess I could figure it out, but or uh, black it back out, but it might look odd. Because everything you ink over white out gets shiny. How do I know how much rain to throw down? I don't know. I, I, salt to taste. All right? Put salt in your food. At some point, you stop. Because it, it's, it's the right amount of salt for you. Cast code has cheered. Vintage, vintage ASMR stream. Am I making weird? Uh, maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> Salt to taste. It is not just old people sayings. Superhero swan. It's very old people sayings. Oh. <sighs> I can't believe everything I say sounds so old. Salt to taste, Sonny. Clayton, you need a salt to taste. That's how much white out I put. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> you wrong whippersnapper. All right. That was the voice I had on Jackson. Get off the computers. I'm drawing on the internet. <laughs> Oh my god. Hey David Peterson. You guys should follow David P Peterson, fantastic creator, artist, 
mouse guard creator. Don't worry, when you guys are all old, you're old you'll remember. No, you won't. When people get old, they think they're the first old person ever. Like, wow, I can't believe it. I feel so old. Like, my body's aching and I, you know, I feel sore just walking around and I can't remember things. Like, how is this possible? You dummy. People have been getting old for, can't even remember. I'm so old. People have been old for, since forever. The fact that we don't prepare for it or think about it till we get old, it just shows you that we live in a very ageist society, and that we are fearful. Whatever. Enough. Guten Abend, Bro Master Holston. Guten Abend, B. Gates. The Dister one already there, dude. I don't know what an IDW limited is. Okay. All right. So now we've got the rain. Uh, now we're going to do some... some um, we have a toothbrush. <laughs> so excited. Okay. And then we're going to take... Um, yeah, look. This is like... I did a piece for... 80 years of Batman hardcover. I must have drawn it and then transferred it. I don't know. But anyway. Um, okay. Oh, you can't see that, can you? All right, let's do it down here. Just putting some ink here, catching it with the toothbrush, going over here, and then going to splatter it. But in this direction... This gives you a finer mist than using like a credit card or a uh, hotel key um, for the first couple of spritzes. And then after that, it gets kind of coagulated. So the fine mist of it um, kind of disappears. As the whiteout clumps onto the individual teeth of the toothbrush. Sorry if this is not on camera, but I, it requires two hands to do what I'm doing, so. Yokai artist, how do you clean the white out from your brush? Uh, well, I just put the toothpaste on at the bottom and then it kind of serves two purposes at once. Okay. Um, I should try it out. Okay, now I need, where is, I do need a plastic card. Um, Let's use this. This will give us like, it's just a business card. This will give us bigger splatter and we can use this for st stars and rain. Just, ooh, it's getting everywhere. That corner is kind of worn out, so I'm going to do this last part down here with a different corner.
All right. Nice cheekbones. Okay. Take your word for it. I'm going to manually add a couple of bigger clumps because that's, I can kind of control the um, location of the spray. Sometimes you can't control exactly the larger ones because you get the really larger ones. You need to put more white out there, which um, can turn the huge blobs. So let's just mix in a couple bigger ones there. And then some on the Okay. Bilster 1694, come back to Megacon Orlando. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be back at that show. That's actually a great show, great location. Um, it's just not in the cards this year. I have San Diego Comic... So I said we have... Uh, in two weeks, um, early May, I'll be in... Um, Dallas. <laughs> Dallas. And then uh, two weeks later, mid-May, on the 18th, I'll be at... Um, Detroit, Motor City Comic Con, and then mid June in Palup, 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 I don't know, south of uh, Seattle. J mid July is San Diego Comic Con. Late August is uh, Toronto Fan Expo. And then uh, there's another East Coast show, uh, well, New York Comic Con in October. And there might be another one in November. I'm still kind of. Debating whether I'm going to go to that one. And then an overseas show. An overseas show in May as well. So May is going to be a busy month for me, but I don't, I don't have details yet on that May show. But when I do, or May event, um, yeah. All right. Let's sign my name on here. There we go. There'll be no Phoenix Comic Con. No. Do you do a black splatter? I do, uh, Eric, at times, but um, that that doesn't. It gives you the texture of grit, and so if people were driving in mud or something like that, that's kind of when I do it. Some schmutz right here. I don't know what that is. Might use white out to make that. Okay. So I will uh, take a photo of this and put it on the uh, Discord channel so you guys can see it. Let me put it over here for VZA so he doesn't have to have all that text covering it. There's no clean way of doing it, is there? Hold on a second, let me do this. All right. There you go. All right. All right. Um, I think that's it for it. To, I went faster than I thought. I thought this would last for a couple hours. So I will be ending the stream 15 minutes early.
Um, but I want to thank the mods for their support of the stream. Obviously, uh, without Kiri Hiko and Ren Elephant and uh, we have Poop Kid helping out, um, the stream would not be as organized as uh, engaging. So please thank them for me. I will, uh, Darth Laurie, so the, it, um, I'll post the link for this, uh, for the auction. I believe it happens in May, so fairly soon, but don't worry. You'll see it on my, uh, my Instagram and Twitter, uh, Twitter feed as well as the, the Discord channel. Thank you very much for the very generous bits, uh, Giovanni. Uh, great job. Looks great. Good seeing you. At, I'll see you at Fan Expo, Dallas. Great. Awesome. Good. Looking forward to it. Um, Thank you very much, Queen City Amusements, for the bits as well. Very, very generous of uh, you both. I appreciate it. Um, so, and then uh, one other thing we do at the end of the stream is we go to another stream. We kind of share the uh, love of art and streaming. So if you guys can hang out, I'm going to go and hang out with you guys uh, at this other stream for a bit. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate all of you guys' dedication to the stream. Qu Quick Draw 13. Uh, some of you guys are waking up at 4 in the morning to watch this, so I appreciate um, you guys being here. It makes all the difference. Thank you uh, to all the regulars and all the new people we saw as well. I will put up the next stream time. I, my guess is going to be... It might actually be a weeknight, uh, because next weekend uh, I've got stuff planned. And then the following weekend, I'll be in uh, Dallas. So I just have to figure out when that is because there's some other art I need to draw. It's Batman related and Swamp Thing related. Um, just a little bit of a hint. And uh, so look for that notification. And uh, it might be easy for those of you on different timetable or time zones to make an evening stream. All right, here we go.